I think, I think there are a lots of parallels. Whilst we may not be go back in time as much as Columbus, I think in recent years what we've hoped to have brought to the world is that same sense of discovery, of visiting places that you haven't yet been to or may never go to, but can visit online and see, uh, discover new places, uh, show your friends and family. Perhaps, like me, you know, discover a city first online uh, then come and visit it and then actually want to take some of that back home with me to show my friends and family what a beautiful place uh, Geneva has been. <laughs> I think um, what never ceases to amaze me in fact is how quickly all of us around the world have grasped the potential of new technology. It was only a few years ago that we were all thinking about how revolutionary the fax machine had become and now in many ways we're taking the internet and the use of the internet and the, uh, the ways in which we can make use of the internet for granted. Um, in some parts of the world, you know, access isn't quite at the levels that we have the pleasure of enjoying here in Western Europe. Um, but I think what you do see is that same enthusiasm, the enthusiasm for access to knowledge and information and the enthusiasm to be able to share that information. So that is uh, very similar throughout the world and, and that's a great joy. I think um, some of the developing countries obviously have, um, you know, are, have, do not yet enjoy the same levels of access that many of us do. But even there, I think we've seen technology show us um, some wonderful developments. For example, in places like Africa, you've seen the, the jump to mobile technology, the use of the mobile telecommunications to, to access the internet rather than a computer at the desk. And, and I think that holds great potential for the future of internet access in, in, in developing countries. No, not at all, and it isn't a price that needs to be paid. Street View is, is a product that showcases the streets. It showcases the wonderful buildings, the streets that you walk around. The buildings that you and I could see as we walked, as we walk around a, a city. Um, Google itself has no interest in having pictures of, of individual faces uh, on that imagery. This is about celebrating the, the streets and the cities around us. But we did think of that in advance. Um, we do care um, strongly about the, the privacy of our users. So it's something we gave a lot of thought to in advance. Um, and even at the development stage of this product, what we did was introduce some leading edge technology which um, automatically blurs the faces and also number plates of those individuals and cars that the cameras capture inadvertently as they are taking pictures of the streets um, around, around the cities. So that already is a preemptive technology to avoid that scenario. This is cutting edge techno technology, but it is still not 100% perfect. Uh, there are engineers around the world that are toiling to ensure that we get to that stage. But right now, the best techno technology that is available is not 100%. So what we also do is allow, um, we, we put up an on-site tool, which means that if you find a face, if you find a car, maybe it's even your house that you're uncomfortable with having uh, in the imagery. There is actually, there are uh, means on the website to request the removal of that imagery. So we try and deal with it at both ends as much as possible in advance to avoid that being an issue, and then also provide the tools to uh, deal with that should that still be the case. But Google's interest is in showcasing the streets. This is street view <laughs> after all, and that's what we're interested in. Very nice question. I think it's really difficult, in fact. Um, the, t the wonderful thing about the internet is that it's an open platform. Anyone can put information on the internet, new services, new business models, anyone can access that information. And I think that's what makes it very difficult to predict um, in a wonderful way what will happen next. Who would have thought um, in a case like Google that uh, two individuals in their university dormitory would have a wonderful idea and now be running a company like Google? Um, and I actually think that that's one of the joys of the internet. And I don't think we want it to be too predictable. We want it to be this space, this platform for innovation, creativity, and let users decide what are the great services that they think should win and what, what services do they think should lose. Let, um, and I think that can take us in some unpredictable directions. 
I think the other um, fascinating thing in recent years is watching the way in which the internet has been used um, as a platform for engaging people in political processes and democracy. Um, if you think, think of the Obama election, you know, who, I think even we were surprised at the level at which the internet was used and, and online-based services were used as a platform for communicating and engaging in communication with uh, the world outside of politics as well as the world inside of politics. And that was only you know, in, the, in the very near past. So the ability to predict where we're going next is, uh, is a wonderful, <laughs> um, inaccurate science. And, and long may that last because it's one of the very strengths of the internet.